Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, December 11th, right? 2018. Uh, let us know you can hear us or see us. Give us a thumbs up. I'm with the beautiful Jennifer DeVivo. Did I say it right? Oh, yes, you did. All right, yes, Jennifer did. DeVivo. So we're gonna, we've had a great 30 minutes together and we're gonna have a great show. So give us some hearts once you guys come on. We're a little bit early, so I understand. Uh, but we have some things to show you. Willow's on. Willow, I just talked about you today, by the way, or yesterday. Um, so whatever it is that you're working on, I gave that person the thumbs up. Chris is here. Diane's on. We got some hearts. All right, so I'm super excited to have you on the show. I'm excited You've to be here. You've got great energy. Um, we've got some things to debut before we get into Ooh, all of our stuff. Hearts. Lots of hearts. Perry, what's up, Scott? Um, so I want to show, today was the day of gifts. Yes. So Jennifer brought, I don't have it with me, I should have. Oh, she brought me in. a lotus, and there's a big story behind that, which I want you to tell. Oh my gosh. So yes. talk about the lotus, and then, but we have to cheers, because we are drinking from two brand new drinks today, two mugs. This one says the Ted mm. Show on it, and on the back it says, what's in your cup? That is courtesy and a gift of the beautiful team from Justin Core, Core Realty. They're amazing. I love you guys. They brought it to me today. It's an awesome mug. Oh. So, you know, guess what's in the mug? I guess what's in the cup? It it's is awesome. not what you think. That is not coffee. But and then, <laughs> then my friend Zach Siebold brought this today, which is a Yeti martini glass. Mm. A Yeti martini glass, so it keeps your martini freezing cold. There's a top on it, so when you're in your Lyft or your Uber, mm, you can be sipping on it, not go. when you're driving. But, you uh, but it's beautiful. It's gold, and it's gorgeous. So it's been the day of gifts mm. today. So and good. look at this big gift. I've got Jennifer DeVivo here. Welcome. All right, so tell us a little bit about you. Give us a little history. Okay, so history-wise, sister. So I grew up in Orlando for the most part. Um, Where are you originally from? I'm from Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. That's right, and my Spanish is really bad, so forgive me. <laughs> Look, I know how to say dos cervezas, por favor. Oh, there you Maybe go. baño. That's I mean, all that's, you need, I mean, that's all you, you need? need. I actually speak some Italian because I lived over there for a bit, and Love Spanish it. and Italian are so They're close. very similar, right? It's confusing, it's confusing. <laughs> so what brought you to Florida? Um, so basically, we ran out of gas. <laughs> my mom tells me the story is that we were in New York and then we were in Massachusetts for a little bit in 81. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. We were supposed to get to Texas. You weren't born yet. Yeah, exactly. I was just, you know. You were thought about. I was thought about. <laughs> um, so we ran out of gas. We didn't get to Texas. We made it to Orlando. And I always remember coming into Orlando down I-4 when it was still two lanes. Two lanes. And People just, don't believe that, but it's true. It was true. And I just said, all these pine trees. I'm like, where are the palm trees? Where's the beach? I literally thought at that age that there would be a beach and palm trees in Orlando. Of course. Well, yeah. why not? And then what did you do? You grew up, where'd you go to high school? So I went to Forest Lake Academy, um, uh, Fleece, you know, the Seven nice. Day Adventist uh, system, and um, have a great, great group of alumni. We get together every 20, 25 years. Forest Lake's a great, was a great school. Is it still in, is it still there? It's still at, yeah, it's still in Forest City, still there. Um, my kids went for a bit. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, good group of people, and we still we still keep in touch. And that was, a, that was definitely a good time, good relationship. So what did you do? How did you get to real estate? There's always a story, right? And how'd you get to where you're because we have to talk about oh, HGTV, we have to talk about red. She's got this awesome red outfit on. She brought me a red bag today. That must be your signature color. I love my red. Um, but how did you get to real estate? Because you didn't go to just Forest Lake or Forest City or Forest. Yeah, Forest Lake Academy. You didn't um, just go there and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to be a real. It was the last thing. <laughs> it was really the last it's thing. Most Hey, Ellen. I, I thought I would do. My mom, I learned a lot from my mom. She's an entrepreneur, and um, she worked in this town as a minority woman-owned business contractor. And she did painting, she did construction cleaning, industrial stuff, and she would always find a way in with Disney, with the city. How did she do that? I think a woman contractor in the day would have been a Back very big in the challenge. Day. Yeah, and I used challenge. to follow her on job sites in her hard hat and her tight jeans, and she used to yell at everybody. And and she was a good supervisor. She was yelling, and and I learned. I didn't realize I learned prospecting. But when we would run out of money, or we didn't have to money to pay the crew, the guys of six or eight that she'd have, she'd open up her little um, binder with her cards, and she'd start calling. Or the other thing she would do is she would we would get in the car, 
and we would look for job sites and we would look for uh, trailers and we would knock on the door of the superintendent and say, give us work. Um, and it was so she embarrassing. She was a go-getter though. Yes. But she taught you to have no fear about that. I didn't realize, but yes, she definitely she definitely taught me. So how did you go from that to real estate? What was your big why? What was the so transformation there? We we did um you know we we did some work in inter she got tired of construction. We did some work in international business brokerage, and it was a crazy. That's a whole nother you know that's a whole, that's nother, a whole world. nother world. And I quickly found out that I wanted to come back to the U.S. and be a woman working in the U.S. and work with things that. Houses aren't going anywhere. We dealt with, with a lot of international financial investors and you know, it was just a crazy world. And um, my worship leader at the time at work, uh, my, I mean at my uh, church was like, Jen, get your real estate license. I'm expanding. It was before the, the, the boom in 06. I want you to just get it and just help me out. And I was like, okay, you know, and, and that's how <laughs> You I went started. along with the flow. I went along with the flow. I started and I just immediately started doing deals, um, remembering what my mom uh, told me. Yeah, but me. how did, did, did you, when he said that, did you go, I have no desire to be in real estate or did you go, well, no, I want to do something different? I was so inspired by her. So uh, uh, oh, her, Rand, right. Randy um, is her name and she's still in real estate. So shout out to Randy. I'm Randy say Kimmel? Mac, Mac, Randy Kimmel. Randy Kimmel. Yes. She spells it R-A-N-D-Y-E. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I'm familiar. So I, I was very inspired by her um, and she taught me stuff about being a worship leader and then also she had her own real estate company and honestly anything Randy told me I would have done. I've been like, okay, great. And, um, and I worked with her uh, for a bit and um, you know, it was good. And then I just decided I needed to learn more, grow more. And that's when I started getting into what all new agents get into, the maze of real estate, trying to figure out where I'm gonna be, what brokers I'm gonna do, what, what clients I'm gonna focus on, you know, running after all the shiny objects, which I still do, I, like, I still like shiny You like objects. shiny objects, I have no <laughs> doubt there. But tell me about that process, because I think a lot of people um, want to be they think real estate is an easy thing so you get your license and all of a sudden you're making six figures yeah and it's not like that it wasn't like that before even though you could be an order taker right before the, the right crash. before the crash uh, yeah. you could just work at Publix part-time and then be a realtor making six figures uh, or a mortgage broker but nowadays it's different so tell them a little bit about the how, how you went through that and then where you're at today um, so, you know, it was definitely a difficult um, process, but I would say this, um, what I see a lot of agents doing, and I had my own brokerage, like I, I told you, we'll talk about that later, is I see a lot, especially around this time of year, this is the time of year where agents jump and they look for where's the greener, greener grass, this is not working, how am I going to change things up in 2019, and that's good. However, I would say the fundamentals of real estate are the same and the magic is in you. I'm going to steal this from Gil Ramos, my mentor broker. We love, love you, Gil. Gil. We love you, Bobby. Central. We love Bobby. you guys. Woo! Um, they're awesome. Um, and Gil's been my mentor on and off for over 10 years. I met him at Zip Realty when they were pioneering internet. Zip. I forgot about Zip. We were pioneering internet leads before Zillow, people. <laughs> and, um, and so the magic is in you and you are an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. And I think that's the hardest mind shift for people to Very make. Much so. And they go to another uh, brokerage and it's all shiny and then they get there and about two weeks it's like crickets. Right. And they're like, wait a second. You know, and you got to get back to the basics. You got to call, you got to connect, you got to get on appointments. Um, and don't go to too many conferences and don't buy too many new things. You know, it's just. Oh my God, you're <laughs> preaching right there. No, it's true because I think a lot of people, they think they're going to learn through osmosis, right? So if I go to a hundred conferences and I read a million books, then all of a sudden I'm going to be the best realtor or best entrepreneur on the planet. Yeah. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Steve. What's up, guys? Oh. And I think that people, they do that because they don't want to do the work. Yes. No offense. I want you to go to those. I'm a big believer in them, but if you're not doing the work in addition to it, you're not doing yourself any service. You're not doing yourself any justice. That's right, and it's implementation. Um, you know, and I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. Sorry, I'm I a love believer. Tony Robbins. I am a believer now. I walked on the hot coals. You and did. How I was did. that? Did it burn? I, I was not going to do that. 
I would not. I I'm went, afraid of that. I went to that conference thinking this is great, but hell no to the Coles. That's <laughs> that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's a hashtag. That's, hell no to the Coles. Hell no to the Coles. <laughs> um, but an hour later, we did this thing, this meditation. I remember Gil on one side and his wife Lorena on another, and it showed you the power of the mind. I walked over that. I didn't feel a thing except for my pinky toe. Your my, pinky toe? My pinky toe, there was a small burned. burning sensation, but it came off. And then for the next 24 hours, I just felt this amazing energy in my feet. And I remember when I came out, I was like, you know what? There's like 8,000 people in front of me. Those coals are going to be cold. And <laughs> then I smelled the burning, and then I saw the wheelbarrows. And so when the coals get cold, they bring out new coals. Oh. Yeah. And my I was hoping the coals were fake. <laughs> I haven't done this yet. Gil and Bobby keep trying to tell me I need to do it. Even the Freedom Team, they've all done it. You gotta do it. And I, so I want to do it very U much. Ultimately, what it shows you when you go through it is that really the mind, and this is a woo woo, but the mind is so powerful. It really is. And it can change and bend reality if you're into quantum physics. Forgive me, I won't go there, but I didn't feel anything. And it was just amazing. And I was like, if I can do this, how did you Imagine. feel when you crossed over that? And Chris, you're right. You got to be on the field. You have to keep playing on the field. In order to be on the field, you got to be on the <coughs> field. You got to be involved. You got to yeah. do it. You're right, Chris. Yeah. But how did you feel when you got past it? Was it this big sigh of relief? Did you feel this great, like, oh my God, I did it? I did. I felt. And then is it? Does it really motivate you? Because what I feel like a lot of times, people go to events, not Tony's events, but yeah. people go to these things. They come out supercharged. And then the minute they have to implement, it's over. I think what Tony does is he makes you implement when you're there. I agree. I agree. And so you can go in there and you can do conferences and you write these books. And I've done it. You've done it. We make all these books or we, we do like take all the pictures Every of the slides. Of and then you go back and you're just like, oh. I know. Right? I was motivated then, but now I have to, what? I don't want to do that. You know, uh, so with Tony doing that, whenever this per year, which has been a real year of challenge for me, um, I go back and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I walked over those 1200, because he says it, 1200 degrees, 1400, he God. tells you, he comes in and he's like, this will melt metal. I'm afraid I'll cry like a baby. You will not. I know you, you will understand that shift with your mind it. and you will get it and you'll, and you'll be like, oh you my gosh. You can't have any alcohol during it, can We you? didn't have alcohol. I don't think that will help you. You really want to be present for that because there's a certain thing. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so talk about your year. You mentioned it. So you've had a, you've had a challenging year, I'll use that word, and you can yeah. use whatever adjectives or adverbs you'd like to use. But you've had a crazy year 2018 for you. Why? It's been nuts. Um, so I had my own brokerage for uh, like three years or so with my partner, and we parted ways. That's all I'm going to say about that. Best to him. And um, I built the brand, uh, Deviva Realty, Face, um, you know, Presence. Um, I've been quoted on Forbes, MSNBC, Fox News with that brand. Um, did HGTV a we show. Got a big star next to us. I love I, it. Look me up, look me up. But I, I tell people, I had somebody call me the other day, and they're like, Jen, you know, I know you're busy. Do you have time for us? I'm like, I am still a lowly realtor. I still need, I still need to pay my bills. I have time I for you. I still need to sell houses. Okay, just don't believe the hype. You know, it's right. a lot of it out there. Um, and so I had to leave that brand and that was a really devastating process and then of course you Because know, it's your, your baby, partner. right? You you birthed it together. It's a lot plus you're not only business wise but personal wise yes. you're going through this. Yes. So how do you you had to give up, you had to give it up, right? You had to let it go. I let it go. So when you let it go what was your next step? Because I think that's what a lot of people are afraid of. They want to get rid of the toxicity. Or I'm not inferring that that's what you were going yeah. through. They want to get rid of whatever it is that's burdening them. Yeah. So when you do it, when you release it, then you're free. Yeah. And free sounds good until you have to make the next step. Well, free fall first. Free fall. Right? So you're just Absolutely. like... What am I what doing? What am I doing? No idea. All of this stuff, yeah. you know. And, and I knew, number one, I had reached out to Gil because um, I think you need to surround yourself with community Amen. whether it's death divorce whatever it is you're going through you cannot do it alone I know it sounds like everybody says this but like I go to the Y in the morning I have my girls there I go to my church community they surrounded me and I knew um, where Gil was and the, his culture and his way I was gonna be around people that were gonna pull you forward when you're doing you're in that dark space Correct. and then you are then there to pull them forward when they are in that dark space. Right. And I knew I needed to, to do that, and then I knew I needed to start again. And then going back to my mom, my mom had several companies that like blew up, 
and people were calling us and you know I don't want to go there we, we was definitely a roller coaster but what I knew is that I could start again and right. I knew that I could rebrand and I also had a thought in my mind of all of the failures and all the things that I couldn't do with this company I can now do with my new brand and I knew I didn't want to do it alone because having my own brokerage um, with my it's partner it was lonely and isolating, um, you know, and sometimes, and of course, you know, when you go into a bigger uh, company, you think, okay, well, I'm not going to have all the commission, but I'll tell you, like I said, I had my best year ever. Um, you did, which is amazing, It was right? incredible, and, and, and going through this this process was, was crazy, but the other thing that I knew is that I wanted to create my own community, um, so I created a team this year, the DeVivo Real Estate team, um, actually started a little bit last year, was, and this is new for me, becoming a team leader. I've always kind of been this solo entrepreneur, solopreneur they call them. Solopreneur. Exactly, and I knew that if I surrounded myself with a team, that if in the morning I did not want to get up out of bed because I was too depressed, I was too sad, I was too broken, I would get up for my team. I would get up for them. Well, because you have people depending on you. Yeah. And so I think that that almost forces you to have to do that. It's like having kids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No matter I'm how. The realtor mom. <laughs> right. You're the realtor mom. And Nick says, Nick and Maggie say, I like her humility and her desire to break away from people that could have oh, brought her down. That's thank right. You. Because that's what it is. I think. So you had to you had to basically start from scratch. You had to get rid of everything before. Yeah. And you had to start over but what the advantage to that I think is what I hear you saying is that you knew all of the mistakes you knew all the heartbreak and yeah. now you could do things even a little more different and fine-tune it and it's you yes there's nobody else but you you're working uh, obviously under Gil you're working in that but you're creating your own environment your own team your own uh, business plan it's all you that's yes. driving the bus and I all, and I tell agents who come in and, and they see the branding and I've got this great big sign in my office and it's, you can't ignore it um, <laughs> and I tell people you are operating as a business within a business you're an independent contractor and I love Gil and I will always love Gil but it may not be Gil forever who knows what will happen um, but you you create your email stays the same your your phone number stays the same right. you are your brand and that needs to not change as you evolve in your journey in your career unless you decide to sell your company and make some figures on that that's a no that's a whole nother Been there, done that's that. a whole nother thing we were just talking Holly Roser <laughs> we got to give a shout out to Holly! her so Supreme Florida title is a Woo! title company that John Tankersley and I started back in the 2000s and um, John Damasi took it over and Holly was our first hire actually yes. way back in the day so shout out to Holly and I can't believe what a small world that it is. Jennifer Holly's knows been my Holly girl, my title lady loved for her years she was amazing she is amazing so she's absolutely awesome we love you, so Holly. how how about what you're doing in the future like where do you see um, not just business but the real estate world and then what do you want to do going forward um, so where I see, I mean, I do a market update. I have a YouTube channel and I, I love video marketing. So yeah, I love she's what you much do. further ahead than I am. I'm going to tell you right now. I'll give you some secrets later. I'll I need you, those. I'll give you, I'll give I mean, if you could put HGTV in front of your name <laughs> or Forbes uh, or the other Fox. Oh, yeah, I have not hit that yet. There's some, there's some cracks and some hacks, you know what I, I, I mean? I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I started the DeVivo team, you know, um, the Lotus Flower transformation, um, what I really want to have is an amazing team going forward for the next you know few years and just bring it to all that it, it, it can be and really helping and molding and really transforming clients I want to look at clients a little differently because when we meet our clients they're often at their place where it could be death divorce birth um, and really just be a coach and a mentor and an educator and a partner with them and their families from start to finish and being able to matriculate that down to my team Ooh, I like that word <laughs> I haven't heard that in 30 years, matriculate. Get it? Some get people it? are going to have to Google that. It's all right. You're so, fine. so learning to be a leader and then getting your special sauce, your mojo, and, and giving that to your team, empowering them, and then seeing the synergy. Like we did a first time home buyer event this past um, Saturday, and uh, we were all working on a shout out to Jennifer Incarnation, who put it together, and I helped her with the promotions. And we were sold out. We had over 70 RSVPs. Wow. We had partners. That's we had people amazing. coming in the door. And it just showed me the power. And, you know, for me, it's a new thing. The power of working with a team and the synergy that can happen. And I'm like, man, I want to do this again and Collaboration, again and again. don't you think, is exactly. so important. Now, how important has your 
faith and music been to your journey? My faith is, is hugely important. So you were talking about your Gratitude Tuesdays, and I really try to get up in the morning and just have a breathing meditation where I am just thankful for the, the things that have happened yesterday, thankful for the things that are gonna to happen today, and um, just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a church girl, guys. I love the Lord, I love the Holy Spirit in every shape, form, whatever you wanna call it. It's bigger than all of us. Um, but allowing that into my life in, in the morning. And there's, like you said, there's always something to be thankful always. for. And the more that I, I am steeped in my gratitude and the more that I'm steeped in giving to my team and giving to those people around me, the more God and the universe just sends things my way to my cup, you know, runneth over. Um, and Amen. I'm like, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know, so much. So we all get in those dark places. We all get in those things. And those Talk thoughts. about that because I think people watch shows like they'll say, okay, Jennifer's got it super easy. I can't imagine she's ever been through a dark time even though you just said it. And I think that people, there's a lot of people that watch the show that message me later and go, God, I just wish I was in that part where she is. I'm in the dark part now. So how do they get out of it? How do they push forward? Well, I think you have to understand the dark part never goes away. The dark part is the darkness, like the dark side, is always there. Like, That's true. Like bringing you and saying, come here and be dark and depressed and down. And I go there sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm there. But I, I think the biggest thing is to, and again, this kind of goes back to meditation and prayer, is to be aware that that feeling and those dark thoughts, that is not you. You are an amazing spirit. You are an amazing child of God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. You are amazing. You are complete as you are. And these things that are coming, that. we kind of have to be aware of them and look at them and step outside of them, allow them to pass through. Um, and then of course, for me, getting back into prayer, getting back into community, when I can't get up out of bed, because it happens to me this year, you know, going through this, you know, separation with my Did partner. Did you hear what she said? Like, so she's, she's successful. She's doing amazing things, but there are still some times where she couldn't get out of bed or she just didn't feel like getting out of bed. So yeah. when you guys message me and say, I just can't do it, Ted, I wanna tell you that we all go through that. We're all feeling it. So don't ever feel like you're the only person going through it or be hard on yourself because yeah. you're feeling that. Because yeah. we all are going through it in one way, shape, or form or have suffered through it. Yeah, and when you're there, don't don't be, and I beat myself up. I'm a type, triple A. I'm not even an A. I'm like A, 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 A. A. I'm a triple A. <laughs> and um, you know, you, you try to treat yourself as someone that you care about, which is hard and difficult for a lot of us. But allow yourself the space to, to be sad, to mourn, to be down. But then realize, again, community, I start planning things that pull me forward. I right. start putting myself around things, especially when you don't feel like it. Right. It's kind of like going to the gym and growing your spiritual muscles, right? Everybody wants to be zen and happy and all that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. But you gotta go and you gotta take the they time. They wanna immediately be zen though. So what I wanna encourage you to do is like, that's a perfect way. You, have, you wanna figure out how to build up your spiritual muscle, your, your whatever you wanna call it, spiritual psyche, the psychology behind everything. Because if you don't, if you sit in it and you just let let the muck, like the muck. So yeah. what if what if the lotus flower never came out of the muck? That's right. So a lot of people get stuck in the muck and then they, they don't realize that there are so many things that they could do to just begin to pull yourself up one step at a time out of that muck. Yeah, and I would say one last thing, not getting too spiritual. Why, people ask, why am I going through this? Why this is a, the things that I've gone through and the hard things that I've gone through what they have allowed me to do is have compassion. Really to have compassion. I Why do connect. you think that's important? And define compassion because I love that because I'm, that's how I am too. Yeah, I, when I see someone to really feel their pain, to feel what they're going through, to be with them, and that's not always talking. Sometimes that's just listening oh God, and 100%. being with a person and letting them feed into you, even though you know already that they already, you already know what they're gonna say and you know the answer. Sometimes people just need to be seen and people just need to be heard. They do. Um, and so having compassion and empathy for my clients. So when I sit with my clients, I wanna educate them and equip them, um, but I also wanna really understand their story and that allows me to really connect with them and to feel for them. Of course, you're still a business person. You can't take on everybody's projects. This I understand. But, and they feel that connection that develops that trust that we're all looking for yes. with our clients. But it really has to come from the place of, 
I want to bring you to the next season, the next place that you're going to be. I want to birth that with you. I love uh, compassion. I think we miss that a lot uh, because we're taught to be business people and business and compassion <laughs> we're taught don't always mix. And I feel like you can't be an effective leader or effective, impactful business person without having compassion yeah. for people. Yeah. Uh, compassion doesn't mean you're weak and a lot of people uh, equate that the uh, compassion's weak empathy's weak I don't believe that yeah. at all so if you're denying that to yourself and to the people that you surround yourselves with your clients even like yeah. uh, Jennifer said then I think you're missing the boat we have yeah. to be a lot more compassionate with each other and it doesn't mean you don't have boundaries correct you have boundaries and sometimes when people are in, are in pain they want to break through those boundaries and hurt you and and again having that compassion realize it's not me it's not about me this person is hurting me or saying what they're doing it's about what's going on with them and I can again separate myself from that and allows me to be a, just a more effective business person because y'all yes. know we get like grudges what is that person saying oh well, I can't God. believe we talked it. about this earlier <laughs> women empowerment that's a whole nother you topic know, that's a whole a whole nother thing <laughs> but it also helps me to have compassion with my team members to yes. grow the best team yes. has when people new realtors come in you know compassion for them and the story of you know what it is that they're going through and then you can effectively go forward if you're not listening to a person and you're just talking at them and stuff like that and you're going forward you're often going forward by yourself correct absolutely <laughs> and you the thing is is that somewhere along the line there had to be somebody who was compassionate toward you yes. like I remember the people very very vividly who were compassionate from a young, being a young child. Yeah. You guys know that story, I've talked about it. All of that stuff, they, it, people remember that. They yes. remember when you took a minute and it's not gonna do you any good, but it's gonna make a difference in their lives because you took a minute, opened your heart, and you were compassionate. Yeah, and you know, even like one person I can think of, shout out to LaRue Howard, she's my worship leader at the River of Life Christian Center, and when I was going through things. I love that name, that's my middle name. Ah, there we go. LaRue. And she was, you know, sometimes compassion can come from the most unexpected places. I agree. And you know, I never thought she's had the time, um, you know, to really, to really, but she did, she made that time. And that reminds me, hey, I want to make that time out. And we wound up doing the the New House Hunter show coming out. So, uh, you know, Love I it. got to do that with we my worship leader. We got a big leader. star on today. <laughs> I don't think I told you guys that. I'm feeling it. And I'm looking for more people. So I'm allowed to do up to four episodes a year with them. Wow. And um, so I am looking for my next HGTV buyers. All right. Um, and everybody says they want to do it. But then the reality of, hey, it's three days, sometimes four I filming. love all of those shows. <laughs> Me and the girls. And hey, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Oh. Talk about somebody talented. Boy, that, that girl can play guitar She's like amazing. nobody's business. She's amazing. And her husband is so talented vocally. I yes. mean, you guys are amazing. I love yes, those guys. Yes. Um, all right, so we're going to share all of Jennifer's contact information, how you can reach out to her, um, how you can, she's going to she's gonna be open, so you want to reach out. This is the great thing about the show and this platform, is that people just put it out there, and then if you don't take advantage of it when you're sitting on the other side, come on, we love you guys, and we want you, we love you too, Sharon, yes. we want you to reach out, that's what we're here for. Yes. So if you're moved by what Jennifer said, which I don't know how you can't be, and you wanna to talk to somebody and you're in a crazy dark place, reach out to her. I promise you she's not gonna blow you off. Yeah. And I'll bring anybody on the show that's gonna blow you off, I promise. Yeah. All right, yeah. so <clears throat> any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you wanna share before um, we head out? I, I, I would just say the, the biggest thing that you can do, we're talking about gratitude, literally get up in the morning, breathe, and just connect to everything that happened great yesterday and everything that will happen. And my mantra that has helped me is, I am ready for the good that God has me for Amen. me today. Because when you walk around like this and you're already in that, it's like you're wearing this negative armor. Be open, the God and the universe will surprise you if you're open, good things will come your way, but you have to say, you know what, I deserve it, I'm ready for it, bring it on. All right, so you're <laughs> gonna you're gonna close, by the way, you've been a joy, I love your pieces, thank you so much. Thank but you. I'm gonna put you on the spot, you gotta close out with that song, that a couple of verses from that oh, song, because you know she sings, yes. and I heard what you said earlier, and that's a, oh. that's a great, oh my God, it's so good for the so, heart and soul. So um, I, I said, I, he got some presents today, and he was like, oh, I can't believe it, I'm like, you know what? You deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it. Ted, 
you deserve it. Oh, and you do too. <laughs> we love you guys. You deserve it too. We oh, love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you guys. Kisses. Kisses.